This morning, lawyers for five men charged with conspiring to kidnap Michigan's Democratic governor want a judge to throw out their indictment. In a 20-page motion filed late on Christmas Day, the defense attorneys claim FBI agents and federal prosecutors invented a conspiracy and entrapped their clients who could face life in prison. Federal prosecutors allege the men were upset over Whitmer's COVID-19 restrictions. Five men have pleaded not guilty, and their trial is scheduled to start in March. Joining me now is Joyce Vance, a former U.S. attorney and professor at the University of Alabama School of Law. She's also an NBC News legal analyst. Joyce, good to have you with us. So this defense team says they want the case dismissed because of, quote, egregious overreaching, they say, by federal agents and informants. What do you make of these claims? Are they enough to possibly have the indictment thrown out? And and who has the burden of proof in such a claim here? It's extraordinarily unlikely that the charges will be thrown out in this case, because in order to make out a defense of entrapment, you have to show that you weren't predisposed to commit the crimes that that you were caught up in. And so here the government's gone to extreme lengths in its indictment. This is a multi-count indictment. Conspiracy to kidnap is one of the charges, but there are also weapons of mass destruction charges and others. And there are more than 10 overt acts. That means that 10 steps that one or more of these uh, alleged co-conspirators took to put their conspiracy into place. And these are very serious uh, events. For instance, casing the governor's residence, putting together and testing explosive devices, meeting and arranging for steps that could avoid law enforcement, like using a secure app that would automatically uh, delete communications if law enforcement were to approach. So there seems to be very little opportunity for the defense lawyers to maneuver their way in this situation and to establish and convince the court sufficient to to establish those burdens of proof that there wasn't predisposition here. Of course, the government always retains the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal case. When defendants come forward with defenses like these, they do have to show some level of proof. But that ultimate burden in order to convict remains with the government. Joyce, you mentioned this is a multi-count case. So if the conspiracy charges were dropped, how would that impact the government's case moving forward? Prosecutors like having a conspiracy count in the mix because conspiracy counts uh, give prosecutors the opportunity to bring in evidence regarding all of the activity that was conducted in furtherance of that conspiracy including communications that might otherwise uh, run afoul of the hearsay rule and be out-of-court statements. But this is a complicated indictment. There's more than one conspiracy charge in it. There are substantive counts involving possession of weapons of mass destruction that aren't registered. The reason the government probably wants to keep the kidnapping count in is that it's the broadest one. It involves all five defendants. But if, for instance, in the extremely unlikely event that this were to be dismissed, the government would still be able to go forward unless there was proof of entrapment as to all of these charges, which just is, I think, there's a zero chance of that happening.